What up, what up, you guys? Back again with another rambling of a mambo. I have been seeing posts and groups and um, just different places. I mean, I've even had this conversation with friends. Um, and it was coming to a point where it was like, okay, you know, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it a little bit more because it seems to be something that a lot of people are kind of confused with right now when it comes to spirituality your spiritual journey your growth and it kind of what it boils down to is claiming things that you are not giving yourself titles that you have not earned um before i became a mambo never was it a thought that i would call myself one because why would i i would i hadn't earned that I hadn't made the sacrifices to be that. And I think the funny thing about it is that when I decided to go into voodoo, there were no expectations of who I was within the religion. I think the beauty of it for me was that I wanted to be a part of a religion that honored the ancestors. Um, I wanted to be a part of something that nurtured the earth that you know utilized community i wanted to be a part of a family and the thing that made sense to me was that this was natural this was like a common thing for me to want to be a part of part of it was lineage part of it was you know growing up and watching other people in my community that practiced um even when i didn't even think it would be my thing it was just the beauty of all of a sudden spirit brought all this back to me and it was like, okay, this is this is where I'm going. This is what I'm going to do. It was really clear cut for me. But when I went in and I talked to my now papa, Sin Moise, and I was like, you know, I was a little bit afraid and, you know, a little bit timid. And I was like, I want to do the voodoo. I don't know what that, exactly that means, but I want to do the voodoo. So I went in honest. I went in very naive. I went in with no expectations. And when it came down to coming into the house I literally thought I'm coming in ground level ground level because I'm green I'm green I don't know anything you know I make connections with the spirits but I don't know anything I don't know how to properly serve them I don't know how to properly connect with them you know I'm not sure you know my whole thing is being raised respectful respectful you don't go into somebody's house and tell somebody else how to cook you don't go into somebody else's house and tell them how to clean you know, you come in really humble because that's who you are. You're, you're a guest. And that's the way I went into voodoo. I, I came in as a guest, as a guest, not thinking I knew everything, not thinking I was about to be everything, but coming in really humble and thanking the spirits for allowing me to have this opportunity to connect with them. That's the way I came into it. And I remember when he said, we're going to Haiti, and I was like, okay. And he goes, yeah, you're gonna, you're gonna conzo supwin. You're gonna, you're gonna be a mambo. What? I was shocked. He goes, that's what the spirits want for you. Okay. It was, it was, it was a little wild. And I, I'm not gonna lie. I've had dreams before where spirit told me that I would be a high priestess, and it was, it was something that was so far off. But I was willing to take the journey to get there. I was willing to, to take my time and learn as I go to get there. So when spirit is like, okay, you're here now, I'm like, no, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. I don't think I have everything that I need to have to do this. I don't think I have everything in place to, 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 to me, a, a priestess or a priest position is people who, who step out and they lead, you know, they, they, they come through and they, they don't make excuses. They don't complain about things. You know, they come in and they listen to spirit and that's what they, that's what they do. So here I am thinking, oh, I'm not ready. I'm, I'm in somebody else's house and I'm not ready. But then also again, that's disrespectful to go into somebody's house and they offer you something and you don't accept it. Where I come from, from the South, you know, somebody offers you a plate of food, whether you're hungry or not, you accept the plate of food. That's a gesture. So to be respectful, you do it. So I said, okay, all right. This is what they want me to do. This is what I will do. 
And I remember going to Haiti, and I remember thinking, oh, Lord, I ain't nowhere ready for this. Nowhere ready for this. But Spirit called me. Spirit made a way. And I made the sacrifices. I made the sacrifices. It was hard, y'all. It was hard. And when I walked away from it, and I remember Papa saying, because I cried all the way to Haiti. I did. I cried. And I remember Papa saying, if it was easy, everybody would do it. Everybody would do it. And it made me realize being called to something like that was special. Because Spirit saw that within me. I gotta excuse me though. It is emotional. It is emotional for me. Because it's not a facade. It's not a plaything. It's not um it's not something that you put on and you take off. I'm a mumbo 24-7. 24-7. I serve my spirits. I serve my family. I serve my community. I do what I'm asked to do through spirit. And I'm very honored to be chosen to do that. And it means so much to me. So when I go into groups and I see people say, oh, you know, self-initiation, I can call myself this, you know, I feel like the knowledge that you have should just be given to me because I want it. No, that's entitlement. That's entitlement. You didn't work the way I worked. You didn't lay with me in Haiti. You didn't bleed with me in Haiti. So why would you think that you're able to do the same thing, that you're able to have the same privileges? You don't. And there's there's nothing wrong with, with, with saying that. You know, a lot of people get offended. You can't tell me what my journey is. Oh, I can't. I can't. But I can tell you that when you start um, appropriating things that you haven't worked for, that you haven't earned, it's not right. That would be like me. And I remember a friend of mine a long time ago, we were going to church, Baptist church, and um, I was wearing pants. And she goes, you, you can't come into my my church with pants on you have to have a dress on and i was like okay all right you know i don't have a dress i gotta go buy a dress and she goes well yeah i'll go with you you gotta buy one because you can't the way that you're trying to do this is disrespectful to my church to my pastor to my family and i okay i, I completely got that but i get with a lot of people nowadays this is what we're doing we're going into people's places of worship, of spirituality, of tradition, religions, and saying, you know what? Yeah, I know you got them rules, but I ain't fixing to do that. I know there's a a, a, a structure to this, but I'm not gonna do that because I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm above that. Well, well, shit, if you're above that, then you need to be creating your own shit, right? You should have your own tradition. You should start your own thing. Because the beauty of certain religions, traditions, spiritualities, is the structure of it. It's the structure of it. It's not made for everyone. Not everybody can come in. You, you, you have to, first of all, I think you have to humble yourself to understand that. That you can't just get everything just because you see it. You can't, you know, I, I want a Louis Vuitton purse that's $5,000. I can't go into Louis Vuitton and just walk out with the purse. Louis Vuitton say, no, shit, you got to work. You got to have this money in your bank account to even come in my store. And you, I, if I want the purse, that's what I got to do unless I get somebody who can get in there and, you know, zap it for me. You know, and if you can, call me up. Well, you know, that's not right. Spirit is going to kick my ass for that. But... You guys know what I'm saying. We have so many people that feel like just because it's available, it's available to me. And that's not true. There's a lot of things that aren't available to me. But I respect it because I understand that my place within that is where spirit puts me. Not because, you know, I want to be here that they're going to just, you know, give me this. You know, when I was little, I used to want to be the Pope. 
can't do I can't I can't do that I don't fit into that I don't fit into the box I don't have the criteria for that so I can't just go to Rome to the Vatican and go you know what hey here I am you know give me give me my cape and let you know let me do my way but don't work like that we got to understand that there's a respect if you don't respect the tradition how can you work with the spirits if you don't respect the elders within that community how can you work with the spirits you know this is something that i think people they know but i get it you know let's just push let's push boundaries and see what we can do but it really kind of gets to me sometimes when people get in groups and it's like, well, you know what? I don't know why I can't learn what you learn. I don't know why I can't do what you do. I don't know why, you know, that this isn't available to me. Spirit didn't, it, 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 they didn't give it to you. If they had, then you would have been there with me. If they had, then you would, you would go through the things, the steps that you need to do it properly. I don't get this half-assed spirituality. I don't. I really don't. Um, even when I practice Catholicism, you went to Mass. You did. You you said your prayers. You lived. You listened to Scripture. You took the blood of Christ. You you know you you there was a structure to it. You know, you you couldn't go in there and tell the priest, well, you know, this is not what I want to do today. Let's make it accommodating for me because I don't want to go through everything else. You know, confirmation. You know you know, uh, confessionals. I don't want to do all that. I want to, I want to just do this part right here. You know, that's kind of half-assing it though, because you're picking and choosing what you want out of that to say what I'm comfortable with, but you don't want to do the things that make you uncomfortable, but that's part of your growth. That's part of your, your, your spiritual journey. You know, if we just were able to, to go and, and, and you know, I love the fets where you get to dance, you know, where you listen to, to, to the music and the spirit is coming down and you you just, you're in awe, you're in awe. And I've never been mounted. I haven't been mounted yet. Haven't been mounted yet. But when I go to a fet and I watch it, I'm like, oh my God, that is, that is amazing. That is amazing. And I'm happy for the person. And I see the changes that go through their body and it's not easy for a lot of people. But I, I look at it and I'm like, okay, Okay, but it's not my time yet. So I sit back and I just wait. I wait so that when spirit does call me and when my time comes, I'm like, okay, you know, I'm here, I'm ready. But until then, I stay in my place and I observe. I observe. And I, I you you see so much from, from, from that perspective. You see a lot of changes. If you've ever seen somebody be mounted, you've seen, you see the changes in the physical the physical changes that go on with somebody, even the pain when they're coming out of it, you see that and you realize that's one of those things that you can't go from A to Z. <laughs> it's really not, not for me anyway. It's one of those things where it's like, okay, can you, can you walk me through it? Can you walk, can we get there first? Because I respect the, I, I respect the process of it. And I think that's the key word, respect. I think anytime that we go into something, we have to go in very humble and very respectful. We have to. It's what helps you grow. It, 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 it literally makes the connection with the spirit stronger to me because they, they know that you're trying to do it properly, that you're, you're, you're going in the structure that is set up that so many people have done before you. So many people have gone through these steps. We, we, so, you know, when you're skipping over things, you're missing so much. You're, you're, the knowledge that you want, you're missing because you're, you're trying to get to the end game, whatever that is for you. You know, you have so many people that are like, um, you know, I want to do the spell work. I want to, I want to do the work in voodoo. I want to curse the people. You know, I want to make my, my girlfriend, you know, break up with this new guy, or I want to break up somebody's marriage or, you know, I want to kill somebody because they piss me off. I want to kill them. But then you're like, okay, what law are you working with? Who you who you dealing with? Well, why what, who who why why I need to go through them? I just want to learn to work. So wait a minute. You don't want to learn the spirit. You don't want to learn the structure. You don't want to understand the service, but you want them to give you the work. No, I wouldn't. 
I wouldn't. Why would I? You don't you don't respect me. You don't serve me properly or you don't serve me at all, but you want to come in and learn my secrets. No. If I was one, I would be like, no, hell to the no. Can't get it. You ain't getting it. It ain't yours. You ain't doing me right. I don't do one-sided relationships, and spirit doesn't either. That's why a lot of people don't grow because it's like, you know, it's always like the thing where you call on Jesus when, you, when you're in the bind. Jesus! And he's like, okay, well, 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 well what happened to the other 364 days? We didn't, we didn't commune. You didn't fast for me. You didn't meditate for me. You didn't, what, what? And I know people are going to be like, well, no, that's just what God and Jesus and all, all these spirits are supposed to do. When you call, they're supposed to come running. Why? Why? What's the incentive? What's the incentive? There's a disrespect. You know, I remember um, growing up, my grandmother used to make this gumbo. And can't nobody cook like my grandma. Nobody. I can't even cook like my grandma. But I make a hell of a gumbo because she taught me how to make this gumbo. But here's the thing. We used to get up at 5 o'clock in the morning, get cut up chicken pieces, get some string, and we would go to the water. And what we would do is we would crab. I don't know if anybody has ever been in the South or crab before in their life. You literally tie some chicken to a string <laughs> the way we used to do it. I don't even know how they do it now. And you put the string in the water and you just lay there. You lay there. You might wiggle the string a little bit. Just lay there until you get the bite. And then you had to pull it up slowly to bring it up to the water. You couldn't yank it up because the crab will let go. You had to you pull it up slowly, put it in the net, and then get it. And that that's one crab. So we would sit out there and get a cooler full of crabs. And then we would go back to the house. And we'd have to wash the, the crabs and purge them and all that stuff like that. Pop the backs off and then you have to clean them out before you can put them in the gumbo. And that was like one process of it one process of it and you had to do this with the chicken then you had to go in with the other seasonings and she put bay leaves and everything and you had to do all this stuff to get the finished product to get the finished product and then when people go what's your recipe for your gumbo i can't just give that to you i can't just give that to you that was passed down to me it was a process that was a tradition. That was our time. That's what she taught me. I could tell you how to do it. I could maybe, if I wanted to, show you how to do it. But if you're not going to go through all the steps, are you really going to get the same thing that I'm getting? Are you are you gonna are you gonna make the same gumbo? Probably not. But I think I learned at a young age that things have processes to them. That there's there's steps. There's structure for a reason because the finished product is what you want and you want it in all its glory so you can't really rush through things you can't substitute some things either you you have to do it the way that it's supposed to be done so you can so you can get there and i think that's where we need to kind of come back and take a step back and go okay you know i'm at ground zero what do i need to do spirit how do i move forward where where are we going on this journey and that takes connection so you go to spirit first and you're like, okay, this is what I would like to do. And then you wait for opportunities to come in. And what do they say? When the student is ready, the teacher will come and you have somebody who guides you there and you learn properly. You learn respectfully. You, you, you're, you're humble because this person doesn't have to share things with you, but they're doing it because they want you to get the best experience the best connection with spirit that you can have. And to do that, you can't go in thinking, oh, I know it all. Oh, it all belongs to me. Oh, you just supposed to tell me this. You know, it's supposed to happen within a week. No, nah. no. Nah. Took me, shit, five years. Five years to find a new gun. The right one. I found a lot but to find the right one to help me to my next phase of my journey. And I'm sure there's many more mentors that are coming in, but until then I wait and I deal with my spirits and I learn proper service and I 
serve my community and I take care of my spiritual family. I do everything that I'm supposed to do so that when that next step comes in, I'm ready for it. I'm not going to rush it. I'm going to go ahead and allow spirit to guide me where I need to be to bring the people that are supposed to be in my life in. And I think for a lot of us, that's why we end up with riffraff because we're trying to to rush the process. We're trying to make connections that are not connections that are healthy, that are toxic. Um, it's not somebody's responsibility to give you what they have. And, and my papa says this all the time, you know, if you want to learn, come to me. And I tell you, I was flying to New Orleans last year all the freaking time. I wouldn't go in there for the bars. I wouldn't go in there for the clubs. I was going there. If he, if he, I washed his clothes. I cleaned his apartment. You know, I walked his dog. I did what I felt like a God child was supposed to do. And you may have got some lesson from that. You may not have got a lesson from it. It was what it was. But it was one of the things of properly being in a position and understanding the structure so that I could continue to grow. And it actually makes me a better mambo because it makes me realize that there are steps to this process that elevate me, that help me evolve so that I'm not the same person this year that I was last year. And then next year I'll be different. And it's because of spirit guiding me, bringing people into my life. My elders giving me, you know, knowledge to, to, to evolve. And it doesn't have anything to do with spell work or anything like that. I think if you're coming into voodoo or certain practices just because you want the, the magic of it, you got to be realistic with the spirits that you're working with. Some will do that. But then you have some that you literally have to cultivate a relationship with to get that they'll teach you they'll 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 send the knowledge down to you when they feel like you're ready so i want to say be mindful i'm not going to say and i don't want to dissuade anybody from 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 going into a practice or a religion or a spirituality but i want to just say don't go in feeling like you're owed something don't go in feeling like somebody's supposed to pay you um, back pay you back for what what did you put in why would somebody just give you something that you haven't earned I don't know where that comes from I didn't grow up that way if I wanted it I worked for it I earned it I sacrificed for it and I think when you deal with people who have done that you at least owe them the respect of saying you know what I'm not going to I'm not going to come in and call myself this because I, I'm not that. I didn't earn it. And it has nothing to do with titles at this point. It really is one of the, the things of people coming in and saying, well, this is mine. This is what I'm supposed to have because I want it. But then you're walking on everybody else who actually put the energy and the time into it, who made the commitment. So be really mindful of some of these groups where they they push that you know oh just take it you know call yourself this call yourself that the problem won't be the people in the physical trust me on that one the issue will be with spirit because they have a way of rectifying things that we could never <laughs> never do i could sit up here and talk for an hour about this but the thing about it is if you're disrespectful to spirit spirit will take care of you you won't have to even worry about somebody else coming after you because there's a certain there's a certain way that they do things because they don't gravitate towards that energy of oh you're just going to come take from me you're just going to use my name you're just going to use my energy to get what you want some spirits don't play it they don't be really careful about who you're calling in who you're attaching to who your mentors are um there are certain things that you literally have to start at the bottom and work your way up. Even if you're called, there's still lessons that have to be learned to help you get to that level so that when you come to that point, you're stronger. You're stronger. You're ready for whatever it is that spirit has for you. 
you know I wish a lot more people would instead of cultivating titles and wanting the status and all that stuff because literally initiation means the beginning you're starting over you're learning you're a baby you're 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 taking in knowledge but I wish a lot of people instead of just wanting that power wanting that position would just step out in spirit and you know the homeless community down the street what do they need what can I do for them let me let me go give them some food let me go take some blankets to them you know the person who is struggling with their their light bill as a priestess and I'm calling myself this and you know spirit should be giving me the funds so I can go help this person out you know there's a lot of things that come with power whether you call it power status ego or whatever there's a lot of things that come with it but spirit is also going to ask you to do certain things to step up and do these things and i see a lot of people that call themselves priestess and priests and kings and queens and they wouldn't even um get their feet dirty they wouldn't even you know cross cross a mud pedal to help people and i'm like okay you know doesn't even go with what you call yourself doesn't even go with what what, what your title or your status is that you're presenting to people got to be really careful that you're not connecting with people that this facade you know anybody could throw a head wrap on and and you know light a smudge stick and you know put on some african drums and call themselves whatever whatever you know the proof is in the pudding what are you doing what are you doing for your community what are you doing for spirit and it always comes to light real recognizes real you guys it really does you know there are a lot of people out here that are making money off of people that they're not connected to spirit and a lot of you know they're not connected to spirit <sighs> be careful who you back be careful who you follow be careful who you who you you put on a pedestal you know you have to make sure that you're working with someone who is spirit filled or at least spirit led um I just I hate to see people get taken advantage of by false priests, false this. I have so many people, guy on IG that keeps stealing my picture and putting, putting my my face all over his page and taking people's money in my name, and that irks me. That bothers me. It bothers me. And I just want to warn people that you got to be really careful with people like that, and you got to be really careful with wanting to get in positions that you're not ready for. There's a lot of growth that happens on journeys, spiritual journeys. It is. It takes time. It takes time. And I want you guys to get there. I really do. I really do. I haven't even made it to what my pinnacle is yet. But I'm just moseying on on my journey. And who knows? We might be walking together on this. We, You know, I'm cool with that. I'm cool with that. But be true to who you are. Be true to the spirits that walk with you. Be true to the connections that you have. Because at the end of the day, these connections are either going to make you or they're going to break you. All right, you guys. I love you much. Be safe.